It is pretty common knowledge that Grant Shapps has been out observing an exercise over there. They could easily put two and two together. I, I don't think it would take a, a superpower with Machiavellian intent like Russia to work that out. Um, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they did know. Let's find out more about this with retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell. Evening, Sean. Evening, James. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I mean, to a, to a someone on Civvy Street like me, I hear this story and I'm shocked and I think, oh my word, what is Putin doing now? But is this actually more common than someone like me would normally think? Regrettably, yes. A lot of my former military colleagues who are now flying airlines um, will privately say that actually this has been going for at least the last year, that they uh, have to revert to other forms of navigation when they're around that region. Luckily, um, GPS is but one way of guiding an aircraft. All the civilian aircraft, particularly the airlines, have their own uh, inertial navigation systems and they can't be messed with externally. You wouldn't want to rely on them to go across the pond, but for relatively short periods of time until the GPS picks up again, they work. So this is this isn't unusual, and it's not unusual for a military aircraft um, to be targeted specifically, um, particularly because at the moment, you know, the, the West is on all of the borders of Ukraine, bristling with aircraft, watching, listening, advising, and therefore the Russians do what they can to disrupt that. But presumably it's more than just an inconvenience, that there might be genuine safety problems related to this. Um, absolutely. But I, but I do think what's interesting about the timing of this, first of all, if I, if I was to be slightly cynical, I'd say if there weren't journalists on board who would probably be a bit worried about hearing about jamming, that they thought they'd make a bit of a story about it. Secondly is Grant Shapps is clearly wanting to do a bit of a wake-up call, not only because domestically we're probably not spending as much on defence as we should be. The most recent budget didn't uplift defence. It prioritised tax cuts and childcare over, over defence. And therefore, probably all of that's a bit of a wake-up up call and You'll be remember very recently some of our German Air Force colleagues were had their um, conversations intercepted mm. when they were trying to discuss whether to send Taurus missiles out to Ukraine. And I think all of this is a real wake up call to NATO. Just a reminder that Russia, for some years, we've taken it for granted. Don't get complacent. This is what they can do. This is what they are doing now. And if we don't prepare for that and create capabilities to counter it, we're going to get our fingers burnt if we ever go to war. Would Russia have known Grand Chaps was on board? Uh, I can't possibly know that, but that, but I, what I would say is that, uh, first of all, it's easy to track these aircraft using a standard software that's available to anybody. The military aircraft are often still able to be tracked, and it is pretty common knowledge that Grant Chaps has been out observing an exercise over there. They could easily put two and two together. I, I don't think it would take a, a superpower with Machiavellian intent like Russia to work that out, um, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they did know. Surely it can't be legal. Now, I know Putin is no respecter of international law. We know that. But to deliberately jam any aircraft GPS signal must surely be illegal. I'm, I'm sure it is, James. But I smiled as you asked me that because I thought if you want to start the list of things that Putin is doing that are illegal, that are this significant, it, it's going to be well down the yeah, list, frankly. Yeah. Invading another country, the war crimes he's accused of, the hundreds of thousands of casualties, the millions of people that have been forced to flee. Uh, the list is long and this is just one of the examples of what he's up to. Just on Kaliningrad, it's really interesting, actually. We almost forget a bit about Kaliningrad because it's, I suppose the technical term would be it's, it's a Russian enclave just on the Baltic Sea in mainland Europe. But it could potentially, I mean, particularly with fears that there could be some escalation between the Baltic states and NATO countries and Russia, Kaliningrad might be the kind of place we're going to talk a lot more about. It could well be. If you look at it geographically, it's uh, located between Poland and Lithuania. Lithuania, a former Soviet Union uh, country that joined NATO. Poland is a member of NATO, but has been the sort of uh, the centre field for battles over many centuries. So I think a lot of observers are lo watching Kaliningrad. And, uh, but it's worth remembering also, Russia is doing a bit of an expansionist theme at the moment. It's flexing its muscles. It doesn't want NATO to get involved in the war, because if it did, as has been proven, and it's been fighting Ukraine. It's coming out top at the moment, but it's had a bloody nose doing it. NATO would be bristling with capability, would certainly um, put Russia on the run. So Russia wants to flex its muscles a bit at the moment just to make sure it realises that it's still on the battlefield and still strong. Just finally, Sean, be bold. Who's going to win the Russian election this weekend? Oh, that's a difficult one, isn't it? There's so many runners and riders. <laughs> uh, I think it'll be President Putin by quite a long margin. I have a feeling you may be right on that one. Uh, Sean, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Cheers, James. Uh, Sean Bell there, retired Air Vice Marshal, talking of the Russian presidential election. It begins tomorrow voting. We're expecting the result, even though, as we've been discussing, there's no real doubt as to who's going to be declared the victor on Sunday evening.